about this evening teaching, and I do thank you again for your patience. Just want to give God his due, due diligence and want things to be done in excellency. So we just give God praise. Um, on this evening, if you have been following me, first of all, let's open up with a word of prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank and praise you for your grace and your mercy, how you have provided for us all day long. We thank you, Father God, for uh, your mercies are, are ever new. They're, they're, they're continually uh, falling upon us day by day. Father, we ask now that you would come into our presence and that you would allow us to speak the truth, Lord God, the living word of God. We thank and praise you on this evening for those that are watching by social media. We thank and praise you for that audience. Lord, we give your name the glory and the honor because it's not about us, but it's all about you. Father, in the name of Jesus, we ask now that, Lord God, you would settle our spirits, that we would hear the word of God, which is the truth. We thank and praise you for this awesome teaching. We thank you, Lord God, for the knowledge. We thank you, Lord God, for the evidence. And we thank you, Lord God, for who you are and what you were revealed to us on this afternoon, this evening. We ask, God, that you would bless those that are enduring the hurricane. Father, we ask that you be with them, cover them, protect them. Lord, we pray on this evening, Father God, that we would, Lord God, draw closer to you, draw nigher to you, Lord God, as you soon to prepare to come. God, we thank and praise you once again for being with us and allowing us to go forward in the word of God. Now we come against every diabolical force that would try to prevent and stop us from moving forward to reveal the truth of the living God. We thank and praise you right now, Lord God, that you have loved everything under control and that the blood of Jesus prevails. We thank you and we praise you on this evening. I do pray Father God for souls to be saved, set free and delivered on this evening. In Jesus name we do celebrate and we say hallelujah and we say amen together. Amen. So if you have been following me on Wednesdays, at least the last two Wednesdays, I started a series uh, which is called Apologetics. And apologetics is none other than defending the faith, um, that which we believe in. And so 1 Peter 3 and 15 gives us reference, and it says, Always be ready to be able to give an answer to those that ask, giving in meek and kindness and gentleness. So therefore, apologetics has always been around. You don't hear much about it, but it has always been around, and it will remain to be around to the end. So therefore, I started a teaching as the Lord had directed me on talking about I can't change the terms. And when I say I can't change the terms, I am definitely talking about the word of God, the truth. So therefore, I ventured on and it led me to um, search and read and study on uh, two profound questions. And that is, is, is truth dead and is, is God dead? Well, we have discovered in our last teachings that truth is alive and God is alive. And so we stem from our foundation uh, scripture of being John 18 and 38. I just want to catch you up for those who are just joining us on this teaching series. Pilate asks the question and he asks the question and he says, what is truth? And this question is one of the best questions in the entire Bible. Because when you look at John chapter 18, verse 38, this is an unbeliever asking this question, which cross reference to 1 Peter 3 and 15. And so in that we discovered, praise God, that uh, the question was answered, that truth is alive and truth is evident. And so then I went on to pursue to teach uh, part one on the subject matter, what is truth? And with that, I interjected um, absolute truth, absolute truth in a, re, uh, a re, re, revelistic world, absolute truth in a revelistic world. So um, I digged in what is truth, and you can go back and watch those uh, tapings on Facebook, YouTube, you can watch them on my site, veronicasimpson.org, to catch up, because I do believe you need to get the beginning to understand where we are going. And so from that, I began to do a search on what is truth and begin to teach that. And the Lord began to prompt me to deal with two specific topics. And one of the topics is definitely marriage. 
And so the second topic will be homosexuality, dealing with marriage. So I'm doing a building, a foundation. And so I need you to understand that this will bless you. This uh, teaching is, is to, not to badger you or judge you or, or, or try to convince you of anything of my own thinking, of uh, my own perception. I'm giving you the truth of the word of God. And we know that truth sets one free. So therefore, I am doing a foundational buildup. What is absolute truth? And then um, absolute truth in a realistic world. And then I'm coming back this evening on part three, which I will be talking about the subject matter, marriage. Now, I'm just going to briefly give you an introduction of what is going on as I teach. I'm going to be dealing with introduction. And I'm going to be giving a warning to all. And so the subject matter is marriage. The introduction and the warning to all is this. Do not redefine marriage. Do not redefine marriage. Again, do not attempt to redefine marriage. So God is going to give us knowledge. He's going to give us understanding. He is going to speak to you, you your spirit man. He is going to reveal some things to you that you may not have ever heard before. Not because you didn't know it, but because you maybe didn't understand it and you didn't see it in truth, which is the word of God, the living Bible. Praise God. So I want you to get ready and enjoy what God is about to reveal to us through this divine teaching, introduction, and warning to all. Do not redefine marriage. So we redefine marriage at our own risk. Okay? And saying that, when I say that, when we redefine marriage at our own risk, we are literally, praise God, being injured to be destroyed or being, in, being set up to be injured, destroyed, or lost. Okay? When we attempt to redefine marriage at our own risk, what happens is, is that we put ourselves in a position of being injured or being destroyed or being lost. So, you know, the warning is on this evening, do not attempt to redefine marriage. So when we understand that, one of the things that we need to focus on here is our foundational truth is that um, God created it. <laughs> that's, that's the main thing. God created it. And not only did God create it, he defined it. Not only did he define it, he, he's the only one that can change it. I want to say that again. God created it, he defined it, and he, and only he can change it. So, we cannot change the terms. The word of God is the word of God, people, and it will not change. And so, therefore, it is very dangerous when we try to change God's word. And we know in this last era, there are many people, many organizations, many cultures that are trying to change the word of God. But the word of God stands alone all by itself. So while we're, 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 we're opening this up, we need to understand the world headlines, okay? And the world headlines are about the redefinition of marriage. The world headlines are about or is about the redefinition of marriage. What are you talking about, Simpson? They are discussing it everywhere. All around the world, there is a great discussion about marriage. And it is a vital issue. I come to tell you that. It is a vital issue. And, and one of the things that I love um, as I was studying, the Lord revealed to me, I am, I, I am concerned. And you should be concerned. Not only am I concerned, I'm worried. What are you worried about, Simpson? I'm worried about the new definition for marriage, which has not been made in the headlines. I want to say that again. I'm concerned. I'm worried as a born again believer. Sold out to Christ. I'm worried about a new definition for marriage. Which has not made the headlines. It has not made the headlines. But it has crept in an unnoticeable from society to the church, right? And if you ask many church-going Christians today to give you the proper definition 
of marriage as it, as it is lived out in, in society. Many will give you an answer based off of the society views. Why do you say this, Simpson? I say this because we, as the body of Christ, have been asleep. We are in a place where we became lazy. We became trifling. Come on now. We became a people that does not want to study. Uh, we, 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 it's good to listen to the word of God by tape, by radio. It's good to listen to the word of God by computer. It's good to listen to the word of God. But there's nothing like taking on a Berean spirit. To where you get in and you break down the word of God and allow the Holy Spirit to teach you the uncompromising, unadulterated word of God. To teach you knowledge. And the Bible says we perish because we are unknowledgeable. Knowledgeable is powerful, but pursued knowledge is even more powerful. So we are in an era where we must understand we've got to make some radical changes in our life. I'll say it again. I am concerned, most definitely. I am concerned. Marriage is being discussed all over the world, in the church, in the community, right now, in the political uh, basis. It's being discussed everywhere. Every origin is discussing it. Every culture is discussing it. Every belief is discussing it. Whether they're belief of Christ or whether they're belief of cultic, they're discussing it. Worldviews are discussing it. And everybody is trying to redefine marriage, which is a danger. And so we, as the body of Christ, and those that are listening that may not be a part of the body of Christ, I come to you with truth, and I come to you in boldness of the Holy Ghost to let you know that truth stands alone all by itself. But we as believers need to get ready. We need to understand 1 Peter 3 and 15, how to rightfully, come on now, defend the faith for what is inside of us. Through meekness and gentleness, I come to tell you, your testimony is not enough. I come to tell you, you sharing your church organization, that's not enough. I come to tell you what you think you know in your logical thinking, in your logical fallacies where you feel what you feel is right and what you feel is, is needed to say, that ain't enough. You're going to have to know truth. And the only way for you to know truth is to get into the word of God. So I pray this evening that you would allow God to give you a spirit of a Berean that you may be able to study and rightfully divide the word of God. That you would connect and link up and attach with a people that are on a mission to rightly divide the word of God. Watch this now. Not to tear you down, not to judge you, but we may, that we may come into the understanding of what the true knowledge of God is, what the true word of God is. Mm -hmm. Don't ever become unteachable. So let me move forward. So, you know, uh, Christian and believers, we're given, we're given, uh, Mixed definitions about marriage. We have allowed things to creep in unaware. Unaware. Because we are not on our job. We are not on our mission. You understand what I'm saying? So one of the things that we have to understand is that when we talk about marriage, you better believe it's a foundation. And I'm going to break it down to you. But yet nothing can be further from the biblical truth. All through the word of God, it discusses and it teaches us about marriage. I don't care what you try to do, what you try to say, it teaches us biblical truth. So this new definition of marriage says that marriage is all about me. This is the new definition. That the, the new definition that's circulating in the world <laughs> through media. Uh, through people, through, through communication. It, it is the, this new definition of marriage says that uh, marriage is all about me. There is no greater threat to marriage than this definition. There is no greater threat to marriage than this definition. Let me just break it down to you. More than same-sex marriage. It is more than same-sex marriage. It more than the abandon of marriage by by, by, by many American cultures, if you will, is more than any outside threat. Making marriage about me is the great, greatest danger facing modern marriage.
You're going to understand what I'm talking about in a few minutes. Just keep listening. There is no greater threat to marriage than this definition. And the definition is that marriage is all about me. And marriage is not supposed to be all about me or you or them. It's supposed to, it's supposed to ultimately be about God. It's supposed to ultimately be about God. It is one way to bring glory to him. Hear me. It's one way to bring glory to him. It is a way to learn about our own sinfulness and his grace. It is a way to learn how to love and be loved. It creates a climate of love in which our hearts can be transformed, if you will. Marriage is supposed to be primarily about God. Marriage is supposed to be primarily about God. Marriage is supposed to be secondary about us. It's not about my happiness. It's not about my dreams. It's not about my life. It's about our happiness, our dreams, our lives. When we exchange he for me and we for me, we have dramatically redefined marriage. And we do so to our own demise. We do so to our own demise. What are you saying, Dr. Simpson? I'm going to give it to you like this. The comedian Brian Reagan says this. The focus on self is what, call, what we call the me monster. The focus on oneself is what we call the me monster. It's a monster which is destroying a multitude of marriages and it is bringing a deception with diabolical forces to convince people that are unlearned and unfaithful to God that unethical laws seem to be all right and okay. And if you keep sleeping, it will literally take you out. You will find yourself compromising in all kind of ways. Compromise, believing that same-sex same, same -sex marriage is okay. Compromising, believing that orgies are okay. Swinging is okay. Believing that you know you can uh, be married and have a uh, polygamy, you can have more more than one wife. There's so many reality shows, <laughs> you know, more than one wife. And, and, and I'm gonna deal with that later on polygamy because somebody is saying right now, well, they had it in the Bible. Well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you some evidence. I'm gonna show you what was really going on, but not at this time. What I'm saying to you this evening is that you have to understand. That it is a danger to redefine marriage. The definition of marriage. Let me tell you something. When me is the center, let me tell you what happens. Adultery makes sense. When me is the center, selfishness is the norm. When me is the center, personal happiness is the focus. When me is the center, Manipulation is useful. When me is the center, guilt is a tool to get what you want. When me is the center, divorce is a constant option. When me is the center, pervertedness of diabolical acts and behavior dominates the mind, the body, the soul, and the spirit. When me replaces we, Sacrifice and mutual submission are repulsive. What are you saying, Dr. Simpson? It means that they are arousing, intense, distasteful, and disgusting. What we're seeing today in our society is disgusting. And if that don't vex your spirit as a born-again believer, then you need to go back and check yourself. If that doesn't put up a red flag, you need to check yourself. You need to say, wait a minute, hold up. What have I let myself go to to believe such a thing and redefine what marriage meant? 
Somebody may say, repeat these again, these we, me. When me is the center, adultery makes sense. When me is the center, selfishness is the norm. When me is the center, personal happiness is the focus. When me is the center, manipulation is useful. When me is the center, guilt is a tool to get what you want. When me is the center, divorce is a constant option. When me is the center, pervertedness of diabolical acts and behavior dominates the mind, the soul, and the spirit, and the body. When me replaces we, when me replaces we, it's a sacrifice and a mutual submission to repulsiveness. And repulsiveness simply means intense, distasteful, and disgusting. Now, you check at your, you check, take a minute and think about what your eye gate is seeing on TV, in the stores, in your community, in the church. Think about it. what is your eye gate seeing when it comes to marriage? What, what is your eye gate seeing? You can give comments on Facebook. What is your eye gate seeing? My eye gate is seeing two men with two men, two women with two women, one man with five wives. Oh my God, swinging. It's okay to have open marriage. You can have sex with your wife, sex with your husband, then bring other partners in. That's what my eye gave to see. Rarely do we see a biblical replication of a true marriage. This is where we have landed in the USA particularly. Truth will either drive you to get free or truth will push you away to walk in deception if you do not see yourself it's time. It is time. I'm on a mission. God has me on a mission to teach truth. And I have always taught truth. But I have a deeper, deeper appreciation of it. Because truth is what sets me free. What sets you free. What heals us. What delivers us. Come on now. Truth is your forerunner to make it in. So, without this foundation, a meaningful marriage cannot stand. But it doesn't have to be this way. It doesn't have to be this way. You see, we can reject this new definition of marriage. Mm -hmm. We can have a marriage about something more than just ourselves. We can find meaning and value with our spouses if you're married. And we can experience satisfaction through sacrificial love and mutual, mutual submission. So, in this introduction, today's headlines are all about redef redef redefinition or redefining marriage. Okay? While, is it, while, while that is an important discussion, remember, a far greater threat exists. And the greatest threat to my marriage or to your marriage or to a marriage that is biblical, right, and righteous is not found in the headline. It's not found in political debates. Sad to say it, it's not always found in the church. The greatest threat to the marriage today is the word me. The me monster has came in. The me monster comes with the we monster. 
and the them monster. So the greatest threat to, to the marriage today, the way God designed it, the origin of it, the greatest threat today is me monster, we monster, and them monster. So, there are six types of marriage relationships. You've got flatmates, money mates, sex mates, social mates, bickering mates, and soul mates. These are six types of marriage relationships. Flatmates, money mates, Sex mates, social mates, bickering mates, soul mates. There are probably more out there, but these are the ones that stuck out to me and witnessed to my spirit. Then you have seven types of marriages. Which one are you in? If you're not married, then you can't answer it. But there's a start of marriage, there's a, a companionship marriage, there's a parenting marriage. There's a safety marriage. There's a living alone together marriage. Did you hear me? Living alone together marriage. There's an open marriage. And there's a covenant marriage. For those that are taking notes. There's a starter marriage. A companionship marriage. A parenting marriage. A safety marriage. A living alone together marriage an open marriage, and a covenant marriage. So, there is only one biblical definition of marriage. You heard me say earlier, in today's world of controversy, controversy, we have surrounding ideas such as homosexual marriage, mm-hmm, that is the big one. That is wide open. That is all over the world. And, and for me, it's repulsive. And repulsive means that it's disgusting. It, it vexes my spirit because it goes against biblical truth. However, we'll deal with that later if you stay with the series teaching. But here, there is a general push and pressure to redefine marriage. There is a pursuit to make you fold, to make you bow down, to make you accept what culture, culture desires present before us, such as same marriage, homosexual marriage. So while everybody is debating, while everybody is debating, all over the world, in the USA, while everybody is debating, Supreme Court, uh, what, uh, 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 in the government, in the church, in the community, in the schools, while, while everybody is debating, while everybody is arguing who is wrong, who is right, one can debate all day long, but truth stands alone, and no matter what we think, or no matter what others think, we cannot change the terms. So you ask me, or I ask you, is truth dead? No ma'am, no sir. Is God dead? No sir, no ma'am. And we will see it even the more. I pray you are enjoying this introduction and teaching. So, knowing that I cannot change the terms, Knowing that I cannot change the terms, and I need you to understand, there is a diabolical force that has attempted to change the terms. We'll talk about that later. But what you need to understand is that truth stands alone, and no matter what you think, no matter what I think, no matter what they think, the, change, the terms cannot be changed. So it's common, it is common for people to argue it's common for people to argue and have all of these debates because we have so many different perceptions and we have so many different worldviews. You got polytheism, you got uh, a pantheism, you got a uh, culture theism, you got all these theism, atheism, atheism. You got all of this, all of this mixture in the world. But every one of those um, worldviews, if you will, have taken a foundational scripture from the word of God to build their organization or their culture or their base. So in order for somebody else to make themselves look 
look good and deceive other people. They were, they they have to, they take a scripture and and literally twist it and build it up so that others may follow. Jim Jones cut. Many others took a scripture. And from that, he became a God to many people. You say, oh, that won't happen to me. If you're not educated and if you're not studying and if you're not uh, 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 getting in your word of God and, and connecting with individuals that are studying the word of God and understanding what truth really is, you will be deceived, honey. You will be deceived. I, I deceive. I pray you're not deceived. But you will be deceived. So, the reality is, the Bible has one and only one definition of marriage. Yeah, it, it, which it utilizes <laughs> from the beginning to the end. From Genesis to Revelation. Right? So, when we understand that, you will see marriage in the Bible. There's one definition. However, you will see it. In different aspects in the word of God. Okay? You will see various different points. You will see different biblical narratives. You will see um, 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 the, 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 the word of God teaching on marriage in a whole different way. But, but all of it comes to one thing. There's only one definition of a biblical marriage. Right? And, and here's the thing. The institution itself remains the same essential thing. So, Genesis chapter 2. The biblical definition. I pray you're being blessed. Amen. Genesis chapter 2. First book of the Bible. The beginning. Okay. Marriage while you're turning there, chapter 2, marriage is central to biblical sexual mortality. All right? So it makes sense that the Bible establishes marriage at the very beginning. Okay? In Genesis chapter 2, we see here God created man. Now I pray you are following me in the word. We see here God creates man. We see here God declares that it is not good for man to be alone and forms a suitable mate for him out of one of man's own ribs. So that both the man and woman can literally form the same flesh and bone. They were two separate people from one body. The text says, Genesis 2 and 24, if you will, the text says, therefore, or for this reason, a man shall leave his father and his mother and be joined to his wife, and they shall become one flesh. Genesis 2 and 24. For this reason, a man shall leave his father and his mother and be joined to his wife. And they shall become one flesh. Genesis 2 and 24. So here, let's break it down. Here we have a man and a woman leaving their parents, praise God, who are also a man and a woman. Oh, but did you catch that? Did you catch that? Let, let me say it again. You got a man and a woman leaving their parents, watch this, who are also a man and a woman. Mm, mm, mm. Mm, mm, mm. <laughs> and what they're doing, they're creating a new household together. This is called a permanent joining. A permanent joining. So you see that the Lord God, he does not leave them out there undone. He, 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 he moves them from, from, from something into something greater. Mm, mm, mm. 
He moves them from, from being alone, from being separate. He, he moves them from that to linking, to joining. And he moves them from what they came out of, which is the womb of a woman, a, a, a father and a mother, a male and a female. He leaves nothing undone. You see order all in it. And so what they're doing, they're creating a new household together and, and they're, they're making a permanent joining. You see, because the two become one flesh. Now Jesus himself, he points back to this as the beginning of an enduring, watch this, and an unchanging definition of marriage. You say, what, what is the definition of marriage? I just illustrated it to you. I'm going I'm, to I'm illustrate it again. Thank you, Holy Ghost. I'm going to illustrate it again. You got a man and a woman. First, you got the foundational truth laid out for you. The command, the order to be compliant to, not non-compliant. For this reason, a man shall leave his father and his mother and be joined to his wife. And they shall become one flesh. You got the command. You got the order. You got, you got the order set. And then you see the definition of marriage. This is profound. You see it right here. Literally being illustrated. A man and a woman leaving their parents. Who also was a man and a woman. And created a new household together. To become permanently joining and the two become in one flesh. So Jesus himself points back to this as the beginning of an enduring, unchanging definition of marriage. There is nothing diabolical in that order. And he answered, oh God, I feel like teaching. Matthew 19, travel with me. Matthew, I truly, truly hope you're being blessed. Matthew chapter 19, all right, verses 4 through 6. And he answered and said, Matthew 19, 4 and 6, because this is a live teaching and I want you to get the scriptures. Matthew 19, Verses 4 through 6. Glory. Hallelujah. And he answered and said. What, what, let's see what Jesus said. Let's see what he said. Have you not read. That he. Who created them from the beginning. Made them. Male. And female. And said. For this reason. A man shall leave his father. And mother. And be joined to his wife. And the two shall become one flesh. So they are no longer two. But one flesh. What therefore God has joined together. Let no man separate. Woo. Glory to God. Woo. Come on. Glory to God. If you ain't married. And you desire to be married. Honey. You're going to have a good foundation. If you are married. Hallelujah. God going to do something even greater because you're, 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 you're getting truth. Over in Matthew 19, verses 4 through 6. <laughs> and he answered and said, this is Jesus. This is Jesus talking. This is Jesus speaking. Truth is speaking. He said, have you not read? He's answering. He's answering the question that, that someone posed. Verses 4 through 6, praise God. Oh, hallelujah. Listen to this. Verse 3. The Pharisee also came to him, testing him. Watch this. He came to him, testing him. Mm -hmm. And saying to him, is it lawful for a man to divorce his wife for just any reason? Yeah, my God, my God, my God, my God, my God, Jesus. And Jesus comes back 
And he answered him like this. Have you not read? I know you read it because you're a Pharisee and you're a lawyer. And you definitely hold up the law. Have you not read that he who created them from the beginning made them male and female and said, For this reason a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh, so they are no longer two but one flesh? What therefore God has joined together? Let no man, let no man separate. So here, Jesus then discusses certain Masonic regulations, right? Regarding divorce that were temporarily given because of the hardness, watch this, because of the hardness of people's hearts. And he offers the proper perspective on how marriage ought to be lived out. That's the reason the Bible says, to death do us apart. It was a permanent Permanent joining together. And here we see that he, 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 the Masonic regulations, Jesus discusses this. The Masonic regulations regarding divorce. I want you to hear me. Regarding divorce. They that were temporary given. You know why? Because of the hardness of people's hearts. So he offers the perspective on, on, on uh, how marriage ought to be lived out. Uh, 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 never is there a hint that this central definition was ever for up questioning. Okay? So marriage. Oh, praise God. Come on and give God praise. So marriage is a covenant that is both legal and relational. And, and that it binds one man and one woman into a new family intended to be for life. Who designed marriage? And what is the earliest record instance of marriage recorded? Go to Genesis 1. Because biblically speaking, travel with me to Genesis chapter 1. Praise God. I know you're being blessed. Biblically speaking, people of God, or those that are on social media, biblically speaking, God is the one who designed marriage. And it's recorded, we understand, in Genesis, in Genesis chapter 1 and 2, okay? So, you know, the earliest recording instance of marriage is found in Genesis. It's found in Genesis, okay? Now, now let me say this. Now, it might be possible that there are writings that mention marriage which predate the actual writing date of Genesis. I don't know. But Genesis purports to be a record of the earliest account of people since it describes the origin, the origin of our first ancient parents. So from that perspective, Genesis is the earliest recorded instance of marriage. Let's look at truth. Genesis 1, verses 27 and 28. Genesis 1, verses 27 and 28. God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. I, I, I'm going to read that one more time. God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. 
male and female, he created them. God, he blessed them. God blessed them. God blessed them. And God said to them, be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth and subdue it and rule over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the sky and over every living thing that moves on the earth. My God, my God. My God, my God, my God. Let me tell you, there is such a diabolical attack on marriages. Because number one, he created them. He created them. Then he blessed them. Then he gave them authority. Come on now. He gave them authority. Come on now. He gave them authority. He gave them authority to be fruitful and multiply. Uh, 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 and this is just not talking about children. Good God from Zion. Where some have taken this and abused women's bodies, wives' bodies. This is not just talking about children. He said, be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth and subdue it. Take dominion over it. And then rule over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the sky, over every living thing that moves on the earth. You need to understand why that why, why the enemy is so after the marriage. Baby, this is this is phenomenal. This is breakthrough. This is breakthrough knowledge. This is powerful sound doctrine. This right here can put a demon to flight. This is why the enemy attacks marriages. He attacks marriages. Now watch this. He attacks marriages and he attacks the male and he attacks the female. Especially if they're not joined together to become one. I told you in the beginning that there were six different types of marriages. And I told you what happens when me is in it, the me monster. So the me monster has came in, crept in unaware mm -hmm, because we got selfish motives. Because we want what we want. We think it's all about our happiness. We think it's all about us. I'm helping somebody right now. We think it's all about being living in luxury. But I come to tell you right now, the origin of marriage, hallelujah, was to pursue. Hallelujah was to uh, walk in authority and dominion as two people joined together. Let me tell you, a marriage that stands like that, the enemy don't have a chance. So, so you, 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 you wonder, think about this. Why is divorce on the rise now? Hmm? Why is there so much cheating? You got spouses killing spouses. Hmm? Obsessive jealousy. Hmm? Different bank accounts. Hmm? Living in one room, got a huge home. You living in one room, she living in the other. Hmm? You see what happened? We allowed the enemy to distort the order. The order has been distorted. And I come to tell you on this evening, as a woman that is married, my husband is the head of my house. And submission is in order. That doesn't mean he walk over me, he abuse me, but we are jointly fit together, knitted. What I can't do, he can do. And then the older you get, and the more you get in the word of God, you become entwined. And so you start thinking on one accord. Good God from Zion. Teach this Holy Ghost. You start thinking on one accord. You start acting on one accord. It's funny because people in the world say, y'all know what y'all been together so long? Y'all look alike. Y'all sound alike. But what they're really seeing is that the, 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 the jointly fitted of becoming one. And this takes a lifetime. 
That's why he said, it, that's why the Lord said in the beginning, it, it was ori it's originally supposed to be permanent. But because we choose to do me, he has came in. He who? Apollyon, Bellas the Bug, Lucifer. He has came in and he has he has tried to destroy what could multiply the earth. What could make a change in the earth? He seeks to destroy. So you ask, is marriage important? You darn right it's important. You better believe it. Because that is the root. And the enemy says, if I can get to the root, if I can get to the root and, 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 and defile the root, then the rest of us will succumb. Just like a tree. The root. The roots are strong. And boy, I tell you, when they are uprooted, you see roots everywhere. And it looks like that tree is alive for days and months. But the more you ride by it, it starts withering up. It starts withering up. Yeah. Because it's no longer attached to life. And that's, that's what has happened. That's where we are. Marriages are no longer attached to life. What is life? God. He put breath in our body. That's life. So, I'm gearing down. He says, now, I've showed you the recorded definition and the reason I created man and woman. He shows you in Genesis chapter 1 verses 27 and 28. He comes back in Genesis chapter 2 and 24 and he says, this is why there has to be a separation in the natural from the man and his mom and daddy. He says, for this reason, a man shall leave his father and his mother and be joined to his wife. And they shall become one. So what was he saying? You're leaving an original origin that I created. Your mother and your daddy. <laughs> and you're now entering in to becoming one. So, in, in Genesis 2 and 24, you know, um, this is the basis for marriage. Since it speaks of a man, people, and of a woman being joined together and becoming one flesh, you're going to have, what's the way of putting this? You're going to have different cultures. You're going to have different cultures. And when you have different cultures, they have different means by which the joining is officiated. So in Africa, they may do marriage in a different way. In Iraq, they may do marriage a different way. The culture, the culture, many different cultures have different means by which they join two together. But let me tell you something. The original state never change. They may have different um, 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 means by which they join two together, but it's always a male and a female. You see, the origin don't change. Can, do I need to say it one more time? 
you have in our culture, in different cultures, <laughs> you, you have different means by which they join two together, a male and a female. Say different ceremonies, some jump over brooms, some do different stuff, you know. But here's the thing, you never ever see the origin, what God originated, what he put in the beginning. You never see it, you never see it different. You, you see a male and a female coming together. Not male, male, not female, female. Something to think about. So marriage is considered a, uh, a, a sociable, a sociable, acceptable uh, union between a man and a woman who publicly covenant to remain committed, right? To and faithful to each other to the exclusion of others. In other words, this thing's so sacred that you don't let nobody inside of it. Oh my God. Oh my God. And 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 he removed the most two important individuals from the beginning. That was the parents. Now, if he removed the parents. was very foundational and instrumental in the truth. Why is you going to let somebody else in? You're committed to, you're committed and faithful to each other. But exclusive of others. My God. I want you to see a vivid picture of why the enemy has came in and defiled what God had put in an original state. But here's the thing. He can try to change whatever he want to change and use whoever he want to use. The terms don't change. The truth don't change. So I leave you with this. What is marriage? Union? Union between man and woman? Sanctified by God? Why is it sanctified by God, Dr. Simpson? It's sanctified by God as a means, watch this, of maintaining family. <laughs> My God. Jesus. Oh my God. My God. My God. It's sanctified by God. Sanctified. Set aside. Consecrated by God as means for maintaining family life. This is where family comes from. So the idea of marriage was ordained by God in his instruction to Adam that a man should leave his father and mother and he and his wife should become should be as one flesh. So, so here, marriage may be defined as that lifelong and exclusive state in which a man and a woman are wholly committed to live with each other in sexual relationship under conditions normally approved and witnessed to by their by the social group or a society although christian opinion is divided on the necessity of continence for the validation of marriage paul plainly taught that it is the pacific act by which men and women become one flesh now i'm not going to go off into uh sexual relationships but let me just tell you, the Bible said the bedroom is undefiled. You need to understand what God has put in a sacred place. What he's put in a sacred place. The opinion of others will try to creep in. That's why we, you got swing marriages and orgies and all this uh, 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 unethical, unrighteous behavior acts happening. Between married people. 
So, Paul plainly taught that it is the specific act uh, by which man and woman become one flesh. Marriage is the state in which men and women can live together. They can live together. And so the definition is necessarily to show that, you know, in the Old Testament, polygamy, okay? It talks about sexually immoral, okay? It talks about all of that. When you begin to look at the Word of God and you begin to see different individuals having many wives, let me tell you, I'm going to teach on that, but not now. But I just need you to focus and understand on what marriage is. The, the, topic, the topic was, uh, 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 um, I started out with introduction. Started out with introduction. Uh, started out with um, introduction and warning to all. Do not redefine marriage. And I went on and I broke it down and I talked about the six types of marriage relationships. I went on to talk about the seven types of marriage. Which one are you in? I went on and I came in and I talked about it. There is only one biblical definition of marriage. Ah, and then I'm, I'm coming down and I'm closing this evening with what marriage is. Marriage is God's design. What is God's design? Marriage. Marriage is God's design. And there are so many reasons I could offer you and explain why God designed marriage. Next Wednesday, I will deal with that part that marriage is God's design. And I will give you the several reasons that can explain why God designed marriage. So my prayer is that on this evening, you have gained um, knowledge and that you will apply knowledge and that if you are married, that you will go back and re-examine what doors you may have opened, if any, and that you will understand the purity of what God has done. If you are seeking to get married, you've got some foundational truth. You've got some foundational truth to rightly divide what is righteous and what is unrighteous. So we need to understand if you're not wanting to get married, you got some foundational truth. So God has ministered to us this evening. The Holy Spirit has ministered to us this evening, you know, and, 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 and he has concluded it with truth, his word, scripture, right? So I need you to understand that what God did between a man and a woman is so powerful that Lucifer himself comes to seek, kill, and destroy. But on this evening, I believe that we have chopped his head off. Why? Because truth sets you free. Continue to pray for me as I pray for you. Please follow me on YouTube. These videos will be on YouTube. Subscribe. You know, be, be, be a good servant and invite others so they can learn as well. You know, don't just keep it all to yourself. You know, they are going to be, they're posted on my website, veronicasimpson.org. You can go to Facebook, Veronica H. Simpson. Become my friend if you're not. And you can sit and have your own personal biblical study because the video is there. What am I saying? You don't have to be left undone. So we give God praise. We give God glory on this evening. And we thank him. If you choose, praise God, to sow seed, 
You can cash out, dollar sign, HVS, DMWCO. You can Venmo at Veronica Simpson. If you choose to sow seed, it only goes for the furthering of the kingdom of God. So we thank God. And I pray this evening that you would pray for me because whenever these teachings are going forward, the enemy does come in and send a host of his army to try to distort and bring confusion. So let us go and pray as we close this evening. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank and praise you for this wonderful teaching. We thank and praise you, Father God, for apologetics, understanding what it is to defend the faith that is in us, that we live for, that we talk about. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray that as this word went forward, Father God, that some, that many were set free, that many were encouraged, and that many were delivered, and that many came into the fold to accept you as their Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, repenting as the teaching was going forward. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for covering my family. I thank you for covering my marriage. I thank you, Lord God, hallelujah, for allowing us to be an example of what you instituted in the beginning. God, we give you praise, glory, and honor. I pray today, Father God, under the sound of my voice, that if there is a divorce on the rise, I pray that you would get a hope, that they would allow you to get a hope to their hearts, minister to their hearts through truth, the word of God, and God uh, uh, allow them to see, Lord God, that things can be worked out. Father, we thank and praise you, and we give you glory, and we give you honor. God bless you. See you next Wednesday at 7 p.m.